is when I heard the people say, Let's go to the temple of the Lord. And now at last our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, O fairest city, so strongly built as one united home. It is there that the tribes are gathered, all the tribes to worship the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, religious sisters, families, friends, all over. Uh, just this morning I received, uh, I said last yesterday, I welcome all of you from... Uh, all over, including the States, and I immediately got a message from Germany. We are also watching you, left Germany out. I don't, so you in Europe, Italy, I know Italy, England, Spain, Portugal, and uh, of course, Germany, welcome, and all over the world, really. Today is, uh, I was told yesterday that to, uh, yesterday was the feast from Florence, Florence Nightingale Day. So to all you nurses, uh, I didn't know it, so I would have mentioned it yesterday. I didn't know it, so happy feast to you for yesterday. But we want to pray for you. Right? We know how much stress all of you who are on the front line, really on the, even ahead of the doctors, you are the ones continuously uh, with the patients and you make such a difference to everything, I know that. So we pray very, very specially for all the nurses, nurses in our Mumbai Hospital, nurses in India, nurses all over the world. God love you, God bless you, God strengthen you at this moment. Today is the 13th of May, Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. So happy feast to all the Fatimas. There's a congregation also, Our Lady of Fatima, happy feast to you. We pray to Our Lady to make us good disciples of Jesus. We turn to her in this moment of this pandemic to be a mother to us, care for us, care for our needs. Intercede with God to bring blessings to us, healing to us, strength to us, wisdom to all the scientists seeking a remedy. And now we begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins. You were heal sent to heal the contrite. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You sit at the right hand of God to plead for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively the reign of Christ in the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some men came down from Judea and taught the brothers, unless you have yourselves circumcised in the tradition of Moses, you cannot be saved. This led to disagreement and after Paul and Barnabas had a long argument with these men, it was arranged that Paul and Barnabas and others of the church should go up to Jerusalem and discuss the problem with the apostles and elders. All the members of the church saw them off, and as they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, 
they told how the pagans had been converted and this news was received with the greatest satisfaction by the brothers when they arrived in jerusalem they were welcomed by the church and by the apostles and elders and gave an account of all that god had done with them but certain members of the pharisees party who had become believers objected insisting that the pagans should be circumcised and instructed to keep the law of moses the apostles and elders met to look into the matter the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to lord. god our response will be i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house kindly repeat i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house and now our feet are standing within your gates o jerusalem our response i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house jerusalem is built as a city strongly compact it is there that the tribes go up the tribes of the lord our response i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house for israel's law it is there to praise the lord's name there there were set the thrones of judgment of the house of david our response i rejoiced when i heard them say let us go to god's house gospel acclamation alleluia alleluia i am the good shepherd says the lord i know my sheep and my own know me alleluia the lord be with you and, and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord at that time jesus said to his disciples i am the true wine and my father is the wine dresser every branch of mine that bears no fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already made clean by the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if a man does not abide in me he is cast forth as a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burnt if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you by this is my father glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ my dear sisters brothers friends religious sisters today is the 13th of may 2020 3 years ago 13th of may 27 we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the apparition of our lady at fatima i remember i celebrated mass at the shrine that we have of our lady 
in Karajat in this diocese. It's a small place, but there were so many people that came. Uh, the civic authorities were caught unawares, and there was a complete mess in the traffic. Uh, there, was, there was no place for the cars to even move about, let alone park. And it was, uh, I managed to reach the place in time to celebrate, officiate the mass. But everything, everything ran out. The, the services, local services uh, were disrupted. It was a beautiful celebration of the 100th anniversary of Our Lady's first apparition. That day, Pope Francis went to Fatima and canonized uh, Jacinto, the, the sisters, the brother and sister of uh, Sister Lucy, the two children uh, among the three who, to whom Our Lady had appeared. On the 13th of May, uh, 1980, 81, there was a, another event. Uh, on that day, I remember I was a student in Rome, and uh, all of a sudden I heard passing my room, my uh, the uh, building, our college where I was staying, a uh, number of ambulances and police, you know, and then we, were, we knew something had happened. And then uh, I telephoned to a friend of mine and it says the Pope has been shot. And Pope John Paul had been shot. Uh, another African priest and myself went to the spot there to pray for him, to see the spot. And uh, you could see people were crying bitterly in St. Peter's Square uh, and the, the spot where he was shot at. Pope the Pope, uh, it, he was so dear to all of us, still is dear to all of us, St. Pa Paul, John Paul II, but we, it was like somebody from the family had been snatched away and uh, gloom all over the city, gloom among the students, gloom among the people, uh, you could sense it all over. We prayed, prayed ardently uh, and he uh, recovered. And the bullet did not touch his heart, he was saved. And Pope St. John Paul II, uh, he attributed his recovery and also his, his life being saved uh, to an intervention of Our Lady of Fatima. So I think it was a year later, he went to Fatima and placed that bullet which was in his body but did not really kill him, it was not fatal, in the crown of Our Lady. Uh, after our Ad Limina visit, uh, um, the bishops uh, of uh, Bom uh, of the Archdiocese of Bombay, all the four of us together, and myself, uh, five of us, we went to Fatima to pray to Our Lady. And uh, there I, we saw the crown where the bullet is put. We prayed very hard, especially for the Archdiocese of Bombay, for all the people of Bombay that uh, God's blessings come on our Archdiocese through her intercession. It was very, very impressive when they again last uh, earlier, uh, late last year again, uh, but did not uh, participate in the ceremonies. Our Lady gave a message to the children uh, and she appeared from May 13, 1917 till October 13, 1917, every month on the 13th, except in the month of August when I think the children were uh, imprisoned because the civic authorities thought they were bluffing and created confusion and disturbed the peace of the place. And so one month they, 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 they were, that month on the 13th, they were in jail. Our Lady did not appear. And she appeared. And her message was, Mary's message was um, repentance, prayer, penance. That's what Our Lady's message in Fatima was. And uh, all the popes, Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, have gone over there, John Paul II, of course, gone over there and prayed to Our Lady for the world and for the church. Uh, I thought it's so appropriate that today, when all the whole world is in distress, we know that from the TV, from the news, from our own condition, and so appropriate for us to pray to her. She never le leaves her ch children unheard, never deserts us. I spoke on Sunday about devotion to Our Lady, true devotion to Our Lady, is imitating her, praying to her, asking for her intercession continuously. And nothing, uh, no more appropriate time, as I, I would think, than now. 
we, she invited us to pray the rosary. She invited us to pray to her Immaculate Heart. We do that regularly. This evening we'll have the rosary, all of us together, you and uh, Bishop Savio who lead us, we'll have the rosary, uh, praying together to Our Lady of Fatima. But we must take more important, the Our Lady appeared in Fatima, uh, and the Church has recognized this uh, also by the Pope's going there personally. So many pilgrims go there regularly. But more important, sisters and brothers, is the message which Our Lady gave us. Remember the circumstances in 1917, the world was in disarray, uh, there was animosity, the war was impending, the fight between the forces of the church, of the gospel, and the atheistic forces, fight, the tremendous fight. And Our Lady implored us to pray, implored us to change our lives, implored us to do penance. This message is uh, so important for us today also to pray, to penance, uh, and become disciples of her son. Uh, Mary doesn't want devotion to her, which is not connected with her son. Everything she does, which she did when she was on earth, but everything that she does even now, she continues to intercede for us. She continues, uh, there are many apparitions of Our Lady, many, and many are the church is skeptical about, the church is very, very careful before it authenticates uh, any, any apparition of hers. I, I know myself of several people who have, who have cases of people who have said that Our Lady has appeared to them, but the church is so particular. But the message is clear, the message from her. Pray, penance, repent, look at your lives and repent, and turn to the Lord. In the gospel, Jesus says, I am the wine, you are the branches. Mary wants us to be the branches of the wine Jesus. She was. Her life, her spiritual life was totally rooted in what our Lord did. And I, we began the week by deep reflecting on I am the way, the truth, and the life. This life of Jesus has come into us. Then we become branches who are living by the wine. The life sap which is in us, in our spiritual lives, should be the life of Jesus, life of his gospel, his teaching, telling us to obey the Father, to love one another. We must use this uh, opportunity of this lockdown to grow in our spirituality, to become better disciples of Jesus, to become devotees of Our Lady, but devotees of Our Lady are always meant to be disciples of our Lord. We pray, I want to pray very specially to Our Lady today during this Mass that she comes to our rescue, prays to her son to see how we could be rescued from this pandemic, from the ravages of it, the ill effects of it, the sufferings that we see of people you in your homes, but look at the migrants, look at the people who are daily workers, how much they suffer, how much in anguish they are, how much in hopelessness they are. We pray for all of them. We pray that we be strengthened in this moment that she intercedes to God to bless us and help us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in his divinity, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, merit to be quest to eternal life, we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us, receive him. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O oh Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, 
and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we, who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you once again. Uh, this evening we'll have once again our journey in faith, and Bishop John will give us a reflection on scripture and tradition. Uh, we learn a lot from these uh, sessions. And then, uh, Feast of Our Lady Fatima, very appropriately, we'll all pray the rosary together. Have a lovely day, and pray to Our Lady right through the day that she may come into our homes and, and protect our homes. Pray to God that he may save us from this pandemic. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>